Hi, you are watching. He asked if Qingzi has a female cousin, because that's the first time he will hear about that and if he is interested in her, but he was just asking about her. Their families are so close that they would regularly gather together to celebrate holidays and festivals before Qingzi and him were even born, and their parents even arranged for them to marry each other. But in the end, since they were both male, the marriage was called off. He told him that if nothing is up, then why is he asking about his cousin? He then told him that he met with a lady the other day, and Qingzi claimed that she is his female cousin. The lady is very pretty, but a little odd, and the man told him to give him some time and he'll find old Qin to ask about her someday. He said he and she are too different, or what did he think? To be honest, he doesn't have any strong opinions about her, she just seemed like she couldn't understand a thing, but thinking of how Qingzi acted at the KTV, it wouldn't be considered weird, it's just that the whole thing seemed a little deliberate. He also thought that maybe he has been obsessed with his police work. From researching and script writing to editing and mastering our best manhwa review channel, I will work hard to roll out the highest quality manhwa entertainment videos twice or more a week. If you like what I do here, please consider supporting the channel. To learn more about how to support the channel, check out the link in the description box down below and if you can't give or simply don't even feel like it, that's okay too. I am just happy you're here. Thank you so much. He asked Uncle Zhao if he has seen any ghosts around lately, but he has not seen any, and the exorcist was the real deal, one exorcism from him and peace has returned, and there are also things that someone can't help but believe in, as others say that with his old age comes a wealth of experiences, but he has never encountered a ghost before. He agreed with that, when Uncle Zhao retires and spends his time around the neighborhood with his wife, he'll be able to embellish his stories about his days as a security guard. He will also make a book, and the title will be, Through the Years, A Security Guard Story. As his grandchildren grow up, he will be able to tell those stories again, and his popularity is guaranteed. He told her if she had seen how her actions scared the old man and she promised not to do that again, and they also think that she is his girlfriend, but she is not his girlfriend, and it is on them if they choose not to believe that. He then told her to come with him so they could have some kumquat lemon. Even though he has no idea why they would think that way because the two of them have nothing to hide after all, they sleep in different rooms and didn't cross any boundaries they shouldn't, and at most they ate together, went shopping together, and she occasionally got her hair blown dry with his help, the young master is right as long as his conscience is clear, then it's fine. She asked him about what girlfriend and boyfriend do so that she will try to avoid those actions and hopefully it will clear up any misunderstanding. He then told her that girlfriend do go to shopping with their boyfriend, walk the street with him and have meals with him and they do live together as well. She asked him curiously if they do go to get milk tea together as well. He then told her that she is an exception since her circumstances are a little special and they can't apply normal logic to it. She also wondered why non-girlfriends drink such delicious drinks. As long as they have a clear conscience everything will be okay, and that's right. They have nothing to hide so there is no need to make a fuse about it as they were about to get to the cake shop. She wonders if that's how it will be since they have nothing to hide and why would they bother about what others think? They were thanked for their patronage, she thought even a cake of that size would probably cost a small fortune, and her debt to the young master is growing larger and larger. Previously, he have said that work is about helping others solve their problems and getting money in exchange and in that case she asked if the young master has any problem she can help him solve, Su thought in his mind that the warrioress would think of working for him to pay her off debts and he can't tell if she is smart or really smart, he then told her that he don't have any problems and even if he have she won't be able to solve them. She curiously asked what the problem is and Sue also, thinking of teasing her a little told her that the problem he is facing is that he is lacking a girlfriend, she went in thoughts, and Sue was wondering if she would really take it serious or if she's going to agree, and even if she agrees he wouldn't dare to make any move on her. After a while, she said she really couldn't kidnap a young woman for him, and she was sorry. It's an iron rule that the leader has set, that's what he was overthinking. The thing that he admires the most about Jiang he is her willingness to listen to what she has to say, and that she never insists that something is fake even if she has never seen or heard of it before. Instead, she will accept the fact that it might exist and will cautiously investigate or ponder about it. Not being knowledgeable enough isn't scary, but wholly accepting what you can see as your entire worldview is. She told him that to be doing something like that out in the open, she doesn't know if that is normal over there, but he had thought that the people of her era were pretty liberal as well, 
just like people that were likely Shimon. Meanwhile, she has heard a little bit about it. He also wondered that his dad had dedicated his entire life to historical research, and if his research doesn't match up with Jiang He's recount, that would mean that the history that he was researching was fake, and then things will later turn interesting. He then told her that if her society was pretty liberal as well, she would have seen something like that too. She said, why would she be concerned with the emperor and his subjects, and that's true. He thought that the historical records usually depict the illicit exploits of emperors, scholars, and government officials, but would such activities have anything to do with commoners like Jiang He? Boring. Tales of conquering the world with a sword in hand while feasting on meat and wine are all just part of his own imagination, so when she's free, she should tell him about her life in the Salt Gang, because it seems pretty interesting. She said her life isn't as interesting as what's happening over there, so he won't like it and she will just treat it as a story time. When they both got home and they opened the package, it was birthday candles. He has no idea how old she is, so he asked the shop assistant for the 18-year-old ones, so she should just plant those candles anywhere she likes around the cake as he's going to take off the light because that's part of the ceremony as they welcome the birthday star of the night warrior S. Jiang He to the stage, and the next step is for them to make a wish. So he asked her to close her eyes and think about her most desired wish and whisper it softly. Once she is done wishing for it, she should open her eyes and blow the candles out in one breath. That's her first birthday over there, and since it's the first one whatever she wished for will surely come true as he turned his back and told her to quickly do the wish and blow the candles out. She said it's a weird ceremony, and she told her that it was originated from the West so it's not that weird once she is used to it, she asked him again if she can use her phone to do that click thingy and preserve the cake. But until the time to cut the cake once she's done with the photo she should. Hold the knife and cut the cake down then move over a little and make another cut like that and so she can have the first slice and he also will take a slice then the rest will be for her so she can eat it however she likes. She was surprised that all the cake could be for her. But at first she didn't want to eat the cake until he make a comment. She had a taste of it and she said it was so delicious. Su thought to himself, remembering that his expression was probably like that too when he first had cream as a young child. And then he had no idea when he got sick of eating cream, whether it was because he'd had too much of it or because he'd eaten more tasty food since then. So how long has it been since he's felt satisfied from just eating something delicious alone? There's no doubt that Jiang He is lucky to be with him every other day. Although life is short, it's certainly not wasted since he's had the chance to take in an ancient person, which makes for an interesting memory when he thinks back on it in the future. He asked if they should drink a toast with some cola, and she didn't hesitate, they drank to their meeting and also to their meeting that spans a thousand years. In the fourth year of Kai Yuan, locusts descended on the village of Lu Di, and luckily, with Lord Tao's efforts in exterminating the locusts, a terrible tragedy was avoided. But even though the locusts were exterminated and the second miss escaped into the wilderness around that time and ended up in Gusu, the second miss liked to say that was the golden era and that Lord Tao was a saint. She even had an altar in her house to pray for Lord Tao's longevity, regardless of whether the city was booming or facing a crisis. She always ate half of what others ate. The leader often called her a foolish fellow, but the second miss would laugh it off and say that she should only enjoy half of what she reaped. The other half was dedicated to her savior in order for him to live a longer life during the golden era. Sue asked if they were martial artists on an altar dedicated to the longevity of a government official. And he also thought to himself that the martial artists seemed different from those in the novels, or maybe they used to go against the government instead. Jiang said if it wasn't for him, the second miss wouldn't be able to even leave Lu Di and the death count would have been much higher. The second miss had said that every additional day that she lived was a bonus, and Jiang wouldn't be able to understand it if she hadn't experienced it herself. He asked if she truly is from the Kaiyuan period, and if a golden era was like that, then what would the Dark Ages be like? Jiang said that plagues, droughts, floods, wars, slavery, and oppression have been calamities everywhere in society, and to them, it can be considered a golden era if there were little to no man-made calamities. The addition of saints like Lord Tao helping with natural disasters makes the world even more peaceful, and that was how the second miss put it, that they were already living in an exceptional golden era and that they shouldn't wish for much more. If that was an exceptional golden era, then what would their current time be considered as? In the 16th year of Kai Yuan, the famine of Yan Di, the year that Jiang came from, can be considered both a good and a bad time. As compared to Jiang, Hizu was only lucky, and it just so happened that he was born in this golden age, so she shouldn't think about it because it's all in the past. Instead, she should focus on eating her cake, and she thanked him. She also said she wants to leave the rest for the next day, but it won't taste as good again the next day, but it will still be tasty. Jiang said food can be thrown around for pleasure when people are showing off their thighs and waists, and even couples aren't afraid to get intimate out in the open. Jian said that the second miss was wrong, a golden era should be like that of her birthday ceremony day, 
and it is a pity that she isn't around to see it. Su then requested another toast, a toast to the new golden era, as she thought of experiencing the world on behalf of the second miss. The following day, Zhu was seated alone in thoughts. Jiang noticed that and approached him, asking what was wrong with him. Zhu also thought to himself, noticing that she had used up her supply and was too embarrassed to talk to him about it. Hakar. Hakar. Hakar ya Lo harakatu, hakar. He then said she should have told him, so he decided to order a box for her online and then transfer a few hundred yuan to her so she could buy things like that at the supermarket on her own and he would teach her how to shop later. He then thought that the first step to learning how to live her life is to learn how to buy things. Even though ordering things off the web is convenient, it would be better for her to be familiar with the basics of modern society. She threw the white strip away. Zhu said it's bad for her to be binding it too hard, and he is just concerned about her. She should look the part while living in modern times, and the top priority is for her to be comfortable. That piece really hurts her back. Zhu told her he would do some research on the web and get back to her, so she should head back and try the other pieces available. It might be that the current size doesn't fit. Then she left. After she closed the door, she realized if what they are doing is considered normal, and he told her that since they have nothing to hide, why wouldn't it be considered normal? She realized he was telling the truth, they have nothing to hide. He paid her 100 yuan just like that, and she paid the money back immediately. Zhu thought if she couldn't bear to part with her money, why was she in a rush to pay it back? And in any case, he'd have to think about some other activity for her to do. He asked her if she knew how to cook, she said she could cook porridge and reheat leftovers. Then he asked her again if she would like to learn how to cook. Also quick reminder as we are going through the recap, if you are new to the channel, some of you watching, are not already subscribed, and if that's you, and you want to guarantee you're always up to date with all good content like this, so feel free to hit that subscribe button and join us on the road to a million subs. And if you enjoy the video, or if you found it interesting, let me know by dropping a like and comment on it as well would be seriously appreciated. Let's continue. Zhu remembered that the saying goes that having a specialized skill would set you up for life and that there is no harm in learning multiple skills as well, so it's a pity that Jiang his martial arts skills are less relevant in modern times, she has neither a specialized skill nor a set of multiple skills, but this is him helping Jiang discover where her true talent lies and what she is suitable for. And he's not taking advantage of a new housemate and asking her to cook for him, it's not going to be like that. She was so excited that if she can learn how to cook, then sure enough, being cooped up all day at home and earning money through video games doesn't give her a proper sense of reality. Though cooking is different, it is a skill that is highly valued regardless of what era you are in. Zhu said she can learn it then, so if she wants to start immediately, she should follow him so he will teach her how to stir fried potatoes. He told her he doesn't cook often in the kitchen so they will have to tidy it up before they can use it, so he taught her how to clean with the dish soap and the steel wool first. He said he wanted to head out to get some ingredients and seasonings so in the meantime she could explore and try to clean the kitchen. Zhu knew his own cooking skill isn't that great either and he can only cook potato strips and tomato eggs, but typically girls should be able to learn how to cook so they'll see how it goes later. After she had finished cleaning and washing the plates, she was a little bit hungry. She thought about her ability to learn how to cook delicious food. While Zhu was back from the place he went to get the ingredients, he brought them and was tired. After he had dropped them on the table, Jiang was asking what they might be. He told her they are called potatoes, and they may look unassuming, but they have a really high yield per plant. They can also be used as a vegetable or a carb staple, and they are cheap. If the Tang Dynasty had a treasure like that, then famine would be few and it would have been a prosperous time. He told her to bring them to the kitchen because he was a bit tired. The first thing to do when she wants to cook is to wash the dirt off the tomatoes using water. Then she should skin the potatoes using a scraper, and just the top layer is fine. Zhu told her that once she's learned how to cook, she can cook and wash the dishes for him, and he will pay her a salary of about 5 yuan per meal. She said she's been living off of him, so it won't be nice for her to earn money for helping out with tasks like that, and since he is eating as well, it can be considered her cooking for herself, so it's not right for her to take a salary for that. Zhu said she can treat it as a bonus or a tip, and eating at home is usually healthier than getting takeaway. He has faith that a warrior like her will be able to pick up cooking in no time. When she is done skinning the potato, she'll have to cut it into strips. He then showed her some samples of how it is done, so she will first cut into slices, then cut into strips, and after that, she should place them into a bowl filled with water because he is going to take a call first, so they should be soaked in the water, and he will continue to teach her when he comes back. He called Housey, and he is calling precisely because nothing is up, if he had something up he would have been busy, he asked if they should grab some skewers in the night because he is bored, Housey said it's almost almost winter so he'll ask him for some hot pot another time, he can't make it because he already got some food cooked and he have no idea when he will be free again, and he if he hadn't added the last sentence, 
Housie would have gladly brought his own utensils just to eat at his house, and if there wasn't a need, he shouldn't let Jiang He and Qin Hao meet again. Zhu has to show her everything in the kitchen, he showed her the salt, soy sauce, MSG power, and sugar, all of them are used for seasoning, and she repeats everything he says. He also tells her to observe the amount of each seasoning he'll be using and remember it. Exclusive MSG use will turn her into a dummy. Zhu also notices that she is acting weird, and he asks her. She says her conscience is clear, the dish smells so fragrant. Zhu had dished the food and present her own to her. She was thankful to Zhu. Zhu also went and thought that ever since he brought in Jiang in two months ago, that is the first time that Theory will cook food in the house she said the food is delicious as she asked if potatoes are grown from the soil. Oil. Zhu said yes, or did she think it was made out of thin air and they steamed potatoes, it's also fragrant when steamed and that's his favorite and he gave her some to try eating it because it's normal if she haven't seen them before they came from the west and it's hypothetically that she is to return back to her time so she should construct a huge ship sail towards the southeast direction in a straight line and be able to snatch a big piece of land. Her name will be so famous that he'll be able to read about her in the history books. He was thinking of finding some land over there so that way he will be able to take root in this world. If he were to have his own land and be able to farm and sustain himself, cooking doesn't seem difficult, so that will be a good solution for his predicament. Even if she hadn't seen all of that, she could learn about them, but she's pretty confident in doing so. Zhu had advised her to drop the unrealistic idea of growing crops, it's not a reliable way of living. People of her time love their land and they are constantly thinking of owning their own land all the time and having their own land would meant that they have established herself there, but time have changed. But she told him that she has the strength as long as she saves some money and some seeds to start a farm then she'll find an abandoned land in the future to manage once the crops have fully grown then she might need his help in harvesting them. This way in three to four years time she can have her own piece of land and then she can start earning some money to repay her debt to him. He said to wait a moment, she should learn how to live her life there before she start thinking about such things. He won't allow it. After spending three to four years cultivating a farm, the only thing is for her to just treat the house like her own, and at the very most, he will take good care of her. She was shocked to hear that from him. He told her not to misunderstand him, he'll take care of her openly, like how he takes care of winter melons. He thought in his mind that a woman from a thousand years ago is pretty fun to be with, and if he really isn't, he'll let her go. She told him to stop joking around, he took her in, and she is indebted to him so she must find a way to repay him back, but offering herself is not good, but Zhu has never mentioned it to her before, she also said she can't treat the place like her home because the house if for him and she is only staying with him temporarily so they have nothing to hide. Zhu said that's okay since they have nothing to hide and their conscience is clear and she will only be staying with him temporarily, and he had not mentioned that he will do something to her and maybe he looks like a bad person to her, but she said Zhu is a good guy. Zhu said he should remember not to call him a good guy game, but to call him young master. She saw a picture on his phone and asked if he was the one, but Zhu said how could that be him, she said the person looks a lot like him, Zhu also told her that even though he looks like him is really not him, but she kept on staring at him and he had no choice but to tell her the truth, the image was him and she said he looks weird in the past. He remembered what the doctor had told him then, that if he have no need of his eyes, he can donate them to someone who needs them, he was young and oh my god foolish and had a flashy style so they are dark past she shouldn't be looking at it. He thought of how he kept the photos in a private album just to discourage himself from any stupid idea and it ended up being discovered by Jiang He. Luckily he kept those videos in a hidden folder if she see those videos she will call him a lecher again. She told him that he also had long hair before. He then said it was the funeral love phase and she wouldn't understand that they were the forerunners of the trend back then. He thought in his mind that if he wasn't like a bum back then, his dad wouldn't be nagging him for rent every other day like he is now. He said it doesn't make any sense that he has to pay rent while living in a family-owned home. He told her to move back and that he would help her create a new account, and it's not a good idea for her to make use of her own account. She can upload the pictures that she's taken of her cake, and as long as there are no accidents, they will be kept there forever, and she'll be able to access them anytime. For the password, she can spell her name in English, but she doesn't know how to do that, but he told her everything she needs to know how to do that. After he had done the research on her online name, Fly Dancer, he said it's like having an alias while traversing the martial arts world, and on the internet everyone uses an online name to hide their real identity, so he'll have to join some gaming groups on her behalf and also observe how they chat with each other and try joining in the conversation if she can. There are all kinds of people on the internet, so if she happens to meet someone toxic, she can just ignore them, and if she encounters something she doesn't understand, she can use the search engine to find an answer. Zhu threw at a rate, will the warrior s become an internet addict, 
it's better than her going off to be a minor or a vigilante, in a blink of an eye, it's almost been two months, and he is kind of used to having someone asking him questions by his side or just conducting their own research in silence. She'll eventually get used to that place and figure out how to live her life and also take root in that era. Also, in the end, she'll become a modern city girl. A thousand years ago, she was just a grain of sand in the Kaiyuan period, and right now, she is a brick in the golden era, and he has done everything he can to help her. She said she was to go and take her shower first, and he then remembered that he bought a large absorbent towel so she can use it to wrap and dry her hair a little, and it will be easier to blow dry her hair after. While she was bathing, she thought of everything that Sue has said, they are really true, everything she has seen so far exists for the enjoyment of people, it's not like back then when people did everything they could to survive, it's only been two months. And even she can tell that she looks wildly different now from when she first arrived. When she came out of the bathroom, he asked her to come so he could help her blow dry her hair before taking his turn in the shower. At the same time, he thought in his mind that if he helped Jiang blow dry her hair every time, she wouldn't find it annoying to keep her hair long and think of cutting it short all the time. She told him that he can consider keeping his hair long too, it'll look pretty nice as long as he doesn't dye it red, so that way she can also help him blow dry his hair as well. He then told her that the current hairstyle is fine, men should understand undergo some form of psychological training, and looking at how his mental state is now, but with only him helping her, it is not a hassle at all, and he also said it is an easy task, though they do it all day in the hair salons outside, so he will also bring her to a hair salon one day to get her trimmed, so he will also bring her to a hair salon one day to get her trimmed so she will look great after, and she was thankful to him also. Jiang thought in her mind that if Su came to her time, he would have survived with his big heart and weak skills, so in that case, she would probably be the one protecting him, and she'd be able to wave it off and say that it was a piece of cake and that golden era was her own. And it's better if he didn't experience it, it's pretty good with how things are. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to watch more videos like these, turn on notifications, and leave a like and comment to help the channel out. From researching and script writing to editing and mastering our best manhwa review channel, I will work hard to roll out the highest quality manhwa entertainment videos twice or more a week. If you like what I do here, please consider supporting the channel. To learn more about how to support the channel, check out the link in the description box down below and if you can't give or simply don't even feel like it, that's okay too. I am just happy you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, we will see you on the next video.